My anchor holds in spite of the storm. I hope that each and every one of you know who the anchor is he's talking about. You've ever been to that place where things seemed tough and the, the ship is battered and the sails are torn. You'd had difficult times, but the anchor took holes. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Miss Carol, for playing the piano. Um, as our children are going out, uh, you can turn to Matthew chapter 6 in your Bibles. I want to tell you that lead, leading music and playing the piano and, and all the rest, you think, well, what's the big deal? We've done it every, church, every Sunday for years and years and years. I know that I, uh, when I first came into ministry and it was my first time to do communion, I've done communion since I was six years old, you know, participated. But when you've got to do it, it's a different story. You know, when you've got to make sure you, you do everything like you're supposed to do and say, well, I just, uh, I panic more over communion than I do standing up to preach. Because I want to be sure I do it right and say the right things. But I, I really appreciate you all stepping up. And as David's not got a voice and Robin's sick and God has lead, led people here to just to help and lead talent here. And I'm praising for that. Thank you all for, for filling in today and, and being part of that. We look at, uh, we have been doing our study on Lord, teach us to pray. This is the final message on, on this particular part of Lord, teach us to pray. Um, we've been doing it, as I said before, those of you who haven't been here, I really thought I'd do this sermon one Sunday. Well, we're on Sunday, chapter, Sunday, mm, Sunday number six. Uh, six messages, Lord, teach us to pray. And I'm afraid I've only scratched the surface of what the Lord was trying to teach us when he said, when you pray, pray in this manner. As we've said before, this is not something that's supposed to be recited and, and memorized just on a routine basis. Uh, he gave a reference in verses before that, don't do vain repetitions. So even the Lord's prayer can become a vain repetition if there's nothing in the heart. If it's not coming from the heart, you might as well just go talk to the wall. It becomes a vain repetition. If you're just doing it, just for the sake of doing it, it becomes a vain repetition. It's, it, it has no effect. But the idea that we've been looking at here is the attitude of the heart. As we pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Father, as we study your word, we thank you that you give us instructions for every area of life. We thank you for, for Jesus who, who gave this instructions to us to the attitude of our hearts as we acknowledge you as King of kings and Lord of lords, as we acknowledge that we want your name to be holy in our lives and in our church and in our community. Lord, we want your will to be done. Lord, as you provided our needs and you keep us safe from harm and you provide us nutrition and you keep us from evil, Father, we praise you for that. Lead and guide us in everything that we say here in these next few minutes. Lord, give me the words to say as we study this passage of Scripture. Open our hearts and our minds that we may see the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, I pray the first thing I'd like to do, as we have been studying this and we've looked at this, that, that we want our Father, we talked about this is to, uh, just to give you a quick recap. How many have been here for all six sermons? A few of you have? Okay. Um, just a quick recap. Our Father, which art in heaven, we said that identifies Him as my Father and I am His child. 
We're talking to, he's talking to believers here that are praying this prayer. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Holy be your name, first in me and in all the world. Let the, all the world see how holy you are. Uh, we're praying that your will be done in my life and in the world. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, we talked about that and how that God does not want us to just say, Lord, give us this day our annual bread or monthly bread or weekly bread. It's a daily thing that God wants you to ask him for provisions in your life that you need. Daily, he wants us to come to him and make these requests made known to him. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Just as, and the Lord, as you've forgiven us, let us never remember how much we've been forgiven and we forgive one another. We talked about that, the importance of that. If we have been saved, if we have been born again, we have been forgiven all, so ought we to forgive one another. So we pray that. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We talked about this last week, how God does not tempt us. He allows us to go through trials and tests. Satan only tempts us. And we are praying that, God, as you lead us through these trials, you lead us through these tests, that we are not overcome by the temptation, that we are not overcome and fall to evil. Now, that's just a recap of what we've done so far. And then we come to this passage of Scripture here. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I said, one of the first things I want to do is clear up. Uh, if some of you have different versions here, are y'all all right? Everybody warm? Everybody just sort of looking today? All right, y'all smile or something. Let me know you. we're all right. Okay, good. Uh, if you have a different version or reading from a different version, a lot of them put this, this sentence or this phrase in parentheses. Uh, the New American Standard, uh, uh, the New American Standard Bible puts it in parentheses. The, Amer- the English Standard Version and the New International Version take this part out of the prayer altogether. You don't find it when Luke records the Lord's Prayer. And so some of them will say that well, it's not in the original manuscript, a lot of the original manuscripts. This was added later by the early church. Uh, and they come up with all the, let me tell you, the, the, I have problems with that. I understand that King James, when he would translate, he did add some phrases and stuff to just help us to understand better what he's talking about there. But the best of their ability, they would add uh, something, not that they're adding to the Word of God, but it was more of a, an adjective to give you um, an idea of the importance of the, of the text or something. But they would add some things. But this part here that I'm looking at here, I believe, I'm just simple-minded to believe that God is all-knowing, all-powerful. He promised my word will never return to me void, and I will establish it forever. So I'm just naive enough to believe that a God like that, who wants us to know his word more than I want to know his word, will be sure he puts in there what he once said. So I don't think it's, uh, I think you're on dangerous territory when you want to stand up and, and try to be a great theologian or sound important and say, well, I'm just not sure that that's what it meant there. Or the original manuscripts, I think you're in dangerous territory. I really do. I believe that you are, uh, uh, if it were something here that doesn't go along anywhere else in Scripture, I'd say, well, you might be on to something. You might be on it. But we see as we look at this in just a few minutes that this is throughout the Scripture. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Uh, uh, thine is the kingdom and thine is the power. And thine is the glory forever. We see that throughout Scripture. So I'm saying it's there because God wanted it there. 
And we're going to talk about it. We're going to teach about it. What does this mean? Uh, it's interesting to me as we've looked to this uh, prayer and this attitude of our prayer. When we pray, we uh, and, and ask with we ask with others in mind. Uh, there's no singular request made. Uh, give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debtors. Lead, uh, lead us and deliver us from evil. Y'all notice that? When we're praying, it's not about me. It's about us as the body of Christ. As we pray, Lord, let me do what I should do within your body for the good of the whole body. Paul talks about that. The body is not just one member, but many members. And all do different things. We should pray for one another. That is very important as we pray in our attitude of prayer. A lot of times we come and the only thing we're thinking about is my problems, God. I got this. I got that. And we do have problems. And we do ask him for petitions. But if you're coming with just a single focus, it's all about me. I don't believe that's the attitude of prayer that Jesus was preaching about or teaching about here. That's why he added that our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. The only singular in the attitude of prayer is hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And thine is the glory. So the only singular you see in the prayer is about God, not about me. Y'all understand that? Okay, I know, I know I took a minute, but I wanted that clear. I wanted that straightened out. When Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray, the focus of the prayer began with the Father and His ultimate glory and ends with the Father and His glory. When we are praying, when we go to the Father in prayer, our first attitude in mind is, Father, I want to glorify you. And I will glorify you, in the, and you will be glorified in that your will will be done. That your name is established holy in all the earth. <coughs> well, you know, this, uh, this prayer, we see a lot of that David did it. When they were collecting stuff for the temple, he gave a prayer in First Chronicles 29.11. You can write that down if you like or turn there if you like. But First Chronicles chapter 29, starting at verse 11, listen to this prayer that David said as they were collecting and God had provided for all the materials to build the temple. It's much the same thing as the close of this. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. You see what David's saying there? He's acknowledging the same thing that Jesus was teaching his disciples. The attitude I must first have when I come to Father in prayer is that first of all, Father, whatever I may ask, whatever is going on, my sole purpose is to glorify your name. It says that's why, uh, other scripture tells that's why we were created to glorify him. A lot of times we get that uh, messed up and confused and we think it's all about us. He goes on to say, both riches and honor come from thee. Your job comes from him. If you have any respect in your community, in your church, in your family, that comes from him. You're acknowledging that. That all things are for him and by him. And thou reignest over all and in thy hand is the power and the might and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all now therefore our God we thank thee and praise 
thy glorious name. Do you see the, the comparison there as David prayed a, pr a prayer of thanksgiving and praise to God for his protection, for his provision, for his greatness. And David understands that all this that we've done, he said, can, can we build a house that would hold the Lord our God? Can he? No, we can't do it. But he understood that if we're building this temple, it, it's not, what you have is not yours. These people gave and, and they brought in and gave gold and silver and all the rest to build this temple. They were giving God what was God's already. I might hit home with you just a little bit right there. You wonder, should I give? Should I do that? Hey, it's not yours anyway. It's his. He gave it to you. He gave it to you to be a good steward with it. It is your obligation to give it back to him. Whatever it is. And I, you know, he's, oh, he's going to get starting about money now. He's going to start talking about tithing now. What about your time? What about your talents? Whatever God has given you, it is your responsibility to give it back to him for his honor and his glory. It's his anyway. Y'all nod your head there? Let me know I'm okay here. All right, y'all, maybe my mic, is my mic working here? I don't, I don't, okay, everybody's with us. <clears throat> when we pray, we got to have the idea that God is the center of our prayer. And his honor, his glory is the purpose of our prayer. If you want to pray and you say, I just don't ever get my prayers answered, brother. It's like I can't even get past the ceiling. James says, because you're asking amiss. James says it may be because you are praying selfishly. It's more what I want for me than I want for anybody else or for God's glory. And the Bible teaches us that if we pray that way, you're not going to get your prayer answered. If you are praying selfishly for your own gain, for your own merit, uh, God works and, and gives power through, through, through things that will enlarge his kingdom and ultimately glorify his name. If you're not on that path, you're on the wrong one. If that's not your mindset when you're praying, you are on the wrong path. Look at here. If it, let's go to Acts chapter 1. You can write it down. Go to it, whatever you want to do. But Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Israel had the same thing. Thy kingdom, thine is the kingdom. And I put in my notes, and the, the, the heading of my note right there is the kingdom. Not a kingdom. Not a kingdom, maybe one day. Thine is the kingdom. What is a kingdom? I told you before, what is, it, what is the definition of a kingdom? It's a king's domain. Father, this is your domain. My heart is your domain. This earth is your domain. All that I see, all that I can even look into the heavens for, it is yours. It is your kingdom. But Israel wasn't quite convinced. Jesus had been crucified. He had been walking with his disciples and the others and teaching them after his resurrection. And he'd been teaching them, if you look in Matthew, in part of Matthew, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. He said, if you don't do this, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. He taught about the kingdom a lot. And then he was crucified and he rose again. And as he taught and just before his ascension back into the heavens, they asked him this question in Acts chapter 1 verse 6. He said, when they were therefore come together, they asked him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They didn't get it. And you say, well, how did Israel be so stupid? 
How can they be so dumb? Jesus will explain. We do the same thing every day. We focus more on our little kingdom. I always tell my kids, I'm the king of this castle. I got my own chair. I got my own seat and place at the table. I rule my roost. That's my kingdom. Not really. We all know Robin does, even when she's sick. <laughs> but no, it's his kingdom. Uh, we, we focus more on ourselves and what we want. I, I want to I work and I want to get this job and I want to move up the corporate ladder and I want to get a house and I want to get that and I want to do this. And, I wanna... and you, we get so, especially in America, we're so set on building my little kingdom that we lose focus of what the real kingdom is. It's his kingdom. And it's for his glory. And Israel was no different here. They thought that Jesus had come and that he had died and that he rose again. And boy, he rose again with power and authority. And boy, we have got it now. Israel will become a kingdom again. Lord, can we rule now? Can we beat our enemies up? Can we get revenge for all the oppression over all the years now? See, they didn't understand it. Jesus said, for thine is the kingdom. God possesses all, and they it, and it, it didn't understand that Jesus had died, that the kingdom of God would grow and be glorified. Thine is the kingdom. He is the sovereign king and has a, a, a supreme authority. He's unrestricted. He answers to no one. <laughs> See, we get that uh, a lot of times that I hear people say, how could God? That just sounds so mean. That just sounds so, how could God, a loving God, do such a thing? Let me tell you, this might shock you a little bit. God doesn't have to answer your question. He is God. And God is going to do what God wants to do. And you say, wow, that sure is rough, Brother Kenny. Well, it might appear rough, but that's why we study his word. Because I understand he does what he wants to do for my best interest. Do you understand that? That's why he's saying, Jesus told the disciples, seek ye first, first, the kingdom the kingdom of God. All this is everything else you desire, everything else that you need, everything else will fall into place if you first have your attitude toward his kingdom and his glory. Do you understand that? The attitude of our prayers should be focused on his kingdom and his glory, not ours. Ephesians 1, 11 says... God works all things according to the counsel of his will. We have a hard time with that, don't we? I mean, we live in America. We live the American dream. If you want to do it, do it. If you just fight and pursue hard enough and long enough and do all the things you want, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. That's the American dream, isn't it? It's just sort of contrary to what God says. I can accomplish anything that God wants me to do to glorify his name. That's what it is. That's the truth of that. Because I know, I've tried. I've tried doing that American dream and doing my own thing. And I have fallen on my face over and over and over again. But if I'll just stop and let him work and let him do, I'm amazed at what he does in and through me and around me because I'm relying solely on him. I've got to hurry. I'm about out of time. Thine is the power. God taught his disciples when they prayed that they should uh, declare that the power belongs to God. It's his kingdom and it's his power. It, it, it's not a, a portion of some power somewhere. It is the supreme power. 
Uh, power is the ability. Power is the force which takes to make something happen. And he says that thine is the power. All that I do, all my strength, everything that I am comes from him and through him. He told his disciples after that uh, in, in Acts, uh, going on down to verse 7 of chapter 1. And he said unto them uh, to answer their question, can we do the kingdom now? He said unto them, is it not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own power? He's the one that's controlling the times and the say It's not Donald Trump. It's not Putin. It's not the, the leaders in the Middle East. They're not controlling this show. It's Almighty God as he's orchestrating and putting all things together for his purpose and his plan to bring glory to himself. He is the supreme authority and all, all power. And it, it is in his hands but listen what he says here. This is interesting to me. We understand that God is all powerful. There is nothing he cannot. I mean, he spoke in this world come into existence. Jesus was a testimony that everything that I've done that you've seen me do, the healings, the, all that I've done, I've done it because I've seen the Father do it. And he's given me that same power. Look what he says here, what Jesus tells his disciples, tells those that are around him before he gets ready to go. He says, but you, not just the Father, not just the Son, but he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You will receive. We see several times in Scripture how God gives some of His power to you. Now, what does He do that for? So you can look good standing in front of folks singing, preaching, teaching Sunday school? So you look good in your community? Oh, a great guy, nice guy. Well, that's a wonderful, what a lady of prayer. I've heard it, and they're awesome. That's great that it's that way, but it's not so you get the recognition. He's giving you that talent. He's giving you that power. He's giving you that strength, that encouragement to bring glory to him for the furtherance of the king. He's blessed you financially to bring glory to his kingdom. That's why they pray up here, Father. Uh, bless this offering that we give, that we further your kingdom. It's all about his kingdom and his glory. And it's done through his power. Is that pretty clear to everybody today? I'm almost done. For thine is the glory. Jesus said that our prayers should center around the, uh, this goal in mind. That all glory belongs to God. All glory belongs to God. I don't believe Carol was up here playing today because she wanted you to come and say, Oh, you did such a great job. That is a willing servant out of the willingness of her heart. Said, Yes, I'll sir. I called her last night and said, Hey, will you be on standby? And she takes me back. Yeah, I'll be glad to do it. That's a servant's heart. Not for her glory, but for God's glory. Man, I ask him to sing, to fill in for the glory of God. We're building a, we're in a building program, not so we can say, look what Bethel did. But it's to glorify God. Everything we do, it's not about this church. It's not about anything. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him and his glory. Everything we do should be done to glorify him. First Peter 4.11, if any man speak, is anybody speaking here? We all do that. Let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, do any minister? Well, you're the one, Brother Kenny. No, I'm not. You ever comforted someone that's going through a difficult time? 
You ever gone to see anybody in a nursing home? You ever gone to see anybody in the hospital? You ever prayed for someone? You ever just give a word? You are a minister. You are a minister, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if any minister, let him do it as of the ability, or you could say the power which God giveth, that God is in all things, may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Everything we do is to glorify him. Jesus said in, and he show, in Luke 1, he said, and he show, went, no, Jesus didn't say, excuse me. When the angel was talking to Mary, and is proclaiming she would have a son that would be born, she said, he said this about him, he shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of the Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. When we are praying, we acknowledge thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. And not just for a time but forever and ever. He said in in, in Revelation 5, and I'll close, we look at this as, as they're all gathered around the throne. As John wrote what he saw, and he said, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all them that are, and, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and forever. Whatever we do, whatever we pray, whatever we ask of God, our attitude ought to be blessing and honor and glory to you, Father. It is your power that I have done or that I receive what I receive. By your power, I do this. I receive this because I want you to be glorified forever and forever in all the earth. I hope this series or this study has helped you to understand a little more. Did you know so much was in the Lord's Prayer? Did you know so much was there? I didn't. I promise you, I thought I was going to do it one Sunday. Had no idea it'd take me six Sundays to even just scratch the surface. What a powerful man. And what what an awesome Savior. I want you to know how to pray. I want you to understand why you're here. Why God does for his honor, his glory, to glorify his kingdom. That ought to be the mindset of everyone in all that we do here and how we pray as we pray for one another. If you don't know him today, if you've never accepted him as your personal savior, that's what this is all about. That you may know him, then glorify him. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you, Father, that you want us to know all about you, more than we can even desire to know you. Father, what what an awesome God you are. You don't have to answer to anyone. Father, you you at many times could have just destroyed this whole world and never had to answer to one person. But by your grace and by your love and by your mercy, you provided a way for us to escape through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we thank you for your love and for your goodness to us and that you want us to have this relationship with you as we walk with you and you give us things and give us the power and the strength to do things day to day to bring honor and glory to your name. Help us to be faithful stewards to do that very thing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.